Ah, <coughs> uh, just like it. greetings. <coughs> My name is Gershon, Gershon Barna DSR. And I'm just going to briefly talk about an observation I made recently, okay? So, this is essentially what happened now. Nah? What happened was, uh, I observed a scenario, okay? And this is how the scenario played out. You basically had like a supervisor slash manager, okay? Talking to his team, okay? This was now before they had to conduct some work, okay? So he was talking to them and he was preaching to them basically a message of excellence and you know, you have to be diligent and you have to be disciplined and you have to always walk that extra mile, you know, that type of thing. And these guys, they were fired up, you know, in this specific store. Okay, these guys, they were fired up. And these guys, they basically worked overtime. When I say overtime, I'm referring to 7 o'clock in the morning until what? That's what? Until around, what, 8, 9, other guys, 7 at night, other guys went up until 10 at night. Because they were like, no, like, this guy, like, you know, like, he's, 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 he's that type of a guy. Even when you, when you look at the supervisor, like, from how he dresses, it's, it's almost like, yeah, this guy, it seems like he was in the army or something, okay? Right. And then this is what happened the Friday, there. Yeah? No, it was the Saturday morning. So the Saturday morning, one of the workers, they came to work, okay? And then they were working Saturday morning. They were just doing touch-up, touch-ups, okay? And what happened now was he then had some sort of a transport issue, meaning he couldn't go home or something of the sort. But yeah, but there, it was something transport related, okay? So then he obviously went to his supervisor. He's like, hey, uh, I have this little issue, da, da 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 Can you just, like, bless me? Like, just sort me out, take care of me. Like, help me pull this thorn out of my foot. And the supervisor had long stories. I'm talking about, like, long stories. Like, long, long stories. And I'm standing there, and I'm now observing this. And I'm like, so what did the supervisor say? And then this guy was like, no, uh-uh. I'll have to, like, make another plan. Can't you, like, assist to, like, make another plan? I was like, wait, what? And I got angry in that moment. I got angry. Like, I, I, I seriously got angry, okay? <sighs> Sorry. The reason why I got angry, ne, is because I realized something deep, something fundamental, ne? And I don't want to say that this is something that's touching on human nature. But... In essence, it is heading in that direction, okay? Here's what's happening there. Eh? As the manager, it's easy for you to stand there, eh? And to come there nicely dressed, you know, and to talk about diligence and excellence and hard work, you know, and all of that. And then you have these guys on the floor and they just work themselves into a coma. Why? Because they buy into your preaching. They buy into your message, okay? Which is... Largely so, it's a good message. It's a message where if that message were to go out into the world, I mean, the world might just end up becoming a better place. But the world is not a better place. Also, taking into account the fact that there are people who go about preaching these messages of no work hard, no be diligent, no excellence, you know, no, you need to be loyal, you know, that type of a thing, okay? Here's where the flaw, ne? In doing this, year is where it comes. It comes in the form of what we call reciprocity. Reciprocity is this guy worked the whole week. Overtime pushing because he wanted to make his supervisor, his manager, so to say, you know, look good. By the Sunday morning, the manager looked like, you know, he was the next best thing since Hercules and Bugs Bunny. Okay? But when he had to reciprocate, a gesture of generosity, a gesture of kindness. When he had to reciprocate back to one of his subordinates, 
he failed in doing so. And I stood there and I'm like, the way this guy was talking about excellence, it's almost as if he believes what he is talking about. But now you realize, no, 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 his message was just another form of manipulation. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, so basically, this guy was just using his subordinates. Now, let's say you have six subordinates. If you treat one like that and the other five feel or relate to the pain of that one and they realize, whoa, that could have been me, that could have been me, that means I'm on my own. There's no us here, okay? There's just this guy who's benefiting, who's not doing the work, who's looking good, so what now, okay? So I looked at this and I was like, this is, if you look at it deeper now, this is one of the many reasons why the world, largely speaking, is such a broken place. It's because you have people that are using these idealistic messages who go around and they preach these idealistic mantras, okay? But they don't believe the message that they are speaking. They don't believe the words that they are saying. They are only saying those words né, to sort of manipulate you, to get you to switch into a state of mind that will, largely speaking, benefit them. Yes, you get paid overtime, but this is not about the overtime. This is about this person is saying, listen, let's spread a message of love, but they themselves are ignorant when it comes to love. Okay? Yes, this person talking about, no, we need to work hard and stuff, da-da-da-da-da. You leave at five o'clock. These guys have to work five more hours without you. You are at home with your wife and kids. These guys are out here on the floor, you know, on their knees, doing whatever it is that they are supposed to do. Okay? That is manipulation. That is manipulation. And manipulation is a spirit Manipulation as an act. Manipulation when it manifests itself in these idealistic speeches. Né, is one of the things where it's busy ruining not just society but the world at large. Because you have a president who's doing it. You have a minister who's doing it. You have a CEO who is doing it. A marketing manager who is doing it. A CEO who is doing it a regional manager who is doing it, where they preach a message they don't love. And that is very dangerous. That is very dangerous. That is very, very, very dangerous. The reason why I say it's very dangerous, it's because you have people in the world there. This is now if you study populism as a, as a last point. If you study populism, populism is basically where... You can call it a, major, a majority, né? Is now raising up and standing up against a minority. It could be the poor standing up against the rich. Now, why is that the case? That is the case because what the rich is doing is they are enriching themselves. They are benefiting. Let's say they are supposed to take 40% and divide the 60% amongst... Uh, 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 the masses you you can argue and say that's fair but when you have things like populism things like the revolutionary you know political agent who comes and who overthrows you know that type of thing it's normally because this rich or wealthy or powerful person is taking 90 percent okay and they are leaving 10 percent for everyone else to divide Yes, you did all the work. Yes, it's your great idea. Yes, this, yes, that. But here's the thing. 100% of that wealth, nah, it was generated with the cooperation and the collaboration of the majority of the people. So why when it comes to a time when there's now a benefit at hand, one person is uh, uh, benefiting, why should their benefit be so disproportional? I'm not saying I'm against, you know, rich or wealthy people. That's not, but, but I'm trying to explain to you a type of thinking, né? That's based on analysis as to say the world, largely speaking, it is a cause-effect machine. And that machine, when I say cause-effect, what I mean is all actions, they have consequences. 
sometimes good consequences, most of the time catastrophic consequences. Okay, and why is that? That is because sometimes the person who's at the top of the pyramid, okay, they sometimes preach a message they themselves don't live. And that's very dangerous. That is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. 